All right, and welcome to the first episode of Southern Outdoor Media's podcast. I'm your host, Brady. I grew up out of Nashville. This is Carson. He's going to be chiming in, helping us out this journey that we're beginning. Carson, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name's Carson. I'm here on the Carson Fishing Team. Most of y'all probably already know that. Um, you know, just grew up in the outdoors, hunting, fishing since the time I was born. Um, really never jumped in a bass boat until halfway through ninth grade. Uh, just grew up saltwater fishing, pond fishing, but never really ventured into the bass fishing world until I got a little bit older. But once that bass bug bit me, I really never looked back. Um, I was just influenced pretty much by all those around me. Um, there was one old man in particular at home that just let me jump in the boat with him. And ever like after that, I just never want to go saltwater fishing again. Just chasing those green fish around. Chasing those green fish. That's what I I started. I think the first fish I ever caught was probably a spotted bass on Center Hill Lake. Mine was definitely a bluegill on a bobber, and I couldn't wind it in. It was just laying in my lap. We used to take a tube of crickets every morning, me and Dad, at the houseboat. My grandparents had a houseboat, and this was back when fish were dumb. And we could go catch a stringer spotted bass on a cricket in a split shot in the matter of two hours, as many as we wanted. I bet they hit the grease too, didn't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like we said, we fish for Carson Newman. Uh, everyone that's probably watching this probably probably knows that. Yeah, I, I'd imagine. imagine. With it being yeah. the first one of these, probably everybody watches is going to know who we are. Yeah. But the, I guess the main goal of this is to just have fun. We're going to talk about topics in the bass fishing world, the hunting world, um, and really just <clears throat> enjoy hanging out sharing a little bit of news yeah so that brings us to where we're heading saturday um the Harris chain and it's i've been down there for <clears throat> a couple days actually i've been down there for two weeks i left the day after christmas and i got back three or four days ago the land down under it's it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one um it always is it always takes big weights to win and top ten's usually pretty good, but a lot of pressure is coming up out there, I will say. Well, here's why it takes a lot of weight to win. Okay. It's a good fishery, but you're not going to go down there and catch 200 bass a day, and those be 25 pounds. Okay. It's not like a TV show. You're not going to Headwaters. You're not going to Garcia. You're not going to any of those lakes. It's just one of those deals where – if you put 275 guys on any given lake in this country, they're going to catch what lives there. And that poor place is getting throttled. Not only – we have two tournaments back-to-back, so that's 14 days of at least 250 boats in the water. It's not counting local tournaments. It's not counting local pressure. Then MLF, they decided, let's just throw a Yoda on top of them, boys. So – Yeah, so a matter of probably – 500 boats in the matter of not even a three-week span. And the thing is, span. there is so much unfishable water down there. It is. It's You're looking for five bites a day. And, and 98% of those fish live in 10% of the water. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you can go anywhere and catch bass, but 90, yeah, 90, you know, there's 10% of the lake where you're actually going to be successful out of all the lakes. There's probably 10% over every lake combined where you're actually going to be successful and have a good finish. Um, and these boys that fish at college level, Toyota level, they're going to find out. Where they know. Going. Yeah, everyone knows. And then Florida That's, Bass, when you get around them, they're going to buy it. So it's one of those things where you think you got it to yourself. Yeah, you ain't got it to you, yourself. You, you don't have anything to yourself out there. And, <clears throat> you know, there's been enough tournaments down there. Everyone, everyone knows where it's going to go down. Everyone knows where it's going to happen. It's just a matter of getting there, getting the bites in time. Because that place gets stingy after 11 o'clock. I ain't going to lie. Some of y'all college boys need to learn how to fish with a screw lock until game day rolls around. Because <laughs> them poor old things, they got 14 hook holes in their mouth, and they ain't even gone in a live well yet. Yeah, it's it's going to be it's gonna be an interesting two weeks down there for sure. Um, By the time the Toyota leaves, there will be more fish within 
500 yards of Venetia Gardens, and then they're on the whole day on Harris chain because <laughs> everybody's going to bring five of them back to the boat ramp, whether it's six pounds or 60 pounds. And them daggone things, if they ain't bellied up, they're going to be suspended out there in the middle of nowhere to cry and help me. Yeah, them locals are going to be winning tournaments out off, off the Venetian Gardens Island for two weeks after. They these probably could just go month. crank the boat ramp like it's East Tennessee <laughs> and throw a shad wrap and snag hook five pounders after these boys get done with it. Yeah, I'm. I, I don't know how I feel about, you know, three tournaments on top of each other. You have... On the same fishery. On the same fishery. You could go so many other places. You can go, you know, if, if you really want to start down south, you can... You know, you got Seminole. You got places out in Texas. You got... There's a million different lakes to put a tournament on down south. You could put them on Seminole. You could put them on Eufaula. You can put them anywhere. My thing is, you look at this from two different perspectives. Number one, college kids... Missing two weeks of school is tough. Yeah. You got yeah. it financially uh-huh. because a lot of these college boys work part-time, go to school, and fish. That's two weeks off work. Some teams are big enough they can send two, two different fleets of boats back and forth and afford that. Our school, we're sending eight down there, and then eight are staying. So that means people are taking off work. That's time away from families. And that's just – I mean, that's school, – School, class. School, class. Like, and then you look at it from a conservation standpoint, that place needs a break. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's Florida fishing. It gets tough. Cold front moves in. It gets even tougher. I mean, don't, I'm not saying send us to a place that's fun. I mean, send us, like, send us to Fort. Somewhere. Send us anywhere. I mean. Somewhere. Besides, you know, everyone being on top of each other. Which I will say, to to back up what you're saying, we caught a 10-pounder off every lake we went to that wasn't a part of the Harris chain. On the two weeks while we were down there. Well, I mean, if you That's if you want a chance to catch a ten pounder, there's a little hole in Dora. There's about eight hundred <laughs> pounds of them down there. Yeah, every, but Jimmy's gonna be flipping his cricket yeah. right next to the, ch- you. the chain gang is gonna be hanging out. The chain on the Dora gang. Hole it is gonna be a circle, and there ain't no tells what's going on in that circle. But I ain't gonna be no part of it. It's it's gonna be. It'll probably be one there. It oh it, yeah, I mean probably. But what are you gonna? But do there's gonna be there's gonna be twenty guys in the hole. Eight of them are going to zero. Two of them's going to catch three of them. One of them's going to catch four of them. There's going to be a couple guys who catch five, and then five might go 25. But that's off to them. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I ain't, I ain't going to go out there and play with them. But, son, you need to throw that Ned rig on that little door hole, and son, you, you one will grab it. I promise you. It's just one of the things. I mean, it's just like a Tennessee River ledge, but there's only one of them. So everybody's going to pile up there together. There's only one of them. And it, that's that's the reality of it. But that being said, it's still gonna be fun. It's gonna and be fun. I mean, there's gonna be hey, there's other holes. It won't be one off any other holes, but there's plenty of fish to be caught elsewhere, and it's gonna be fun. And it they ain't spawned yet. They ain't spawned yet. And I mean, it's gonna it's only gonna get better. We got a little cold weather coming through. But Saturday's gonna be like fifty. And then after that, by the time the rolls around. Coming. 76, 80, somewhere in there. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's Florida fishing. Warmer it gets, better it should get. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot to be said about it. You can go offshore. You can go canals. There's enough water to spread people out, but the guys that find them in practice and know what they're doing, they're all going to be on top of each other because there will be guys that get there the first day, and they graph every inch of that place and find every daggone shell that lives in that lake. And if you got it to yourself, you ain't got it to yourself. Hundred percent. I I definitely agree. And well, we got one more for it too. We do. We have Natty. We both made the Natty last year. Yeah, we got Natty down there. That would be fun. That, that would be fun. You that's know? gonna be a good one, dude. It's, like, that's gonna it's be. setting up right. February. You're gonna have some post spawners. You probably still have some spawners. You might. You probably have some pre spawners too. It's a little bit further south in Florida, but not too much further south. Um, but I mean, it's that's gonna, gonna be like one that's textbook Florida fishing. Like, mm-hmm. if you want to go swim a worm around, you catch fish doing it. If you want to go flip a big weight, you catch fish doing it. You want to go offshore, you catch fish doing it. It's just, I mean, that place, that place should set up right. Yep, and, we'll, you know, you'll get to watch all the tour guys do it first. I think theirs is two weeks before ours. Theirs might be full on, use your eyeballs. Yeah. Ours might be. Yeah. Because, that you know, that first wave's there to big ones. Yeah, so it, it's going to be fun. Um, that'll be a good one, end of February. So that right, I mean that's that's kind of our Florida. That's our first swing down to Florida, and then we start our way back up. 
No, then we spread out, dude. Yeah, like, I wouldn't say back up. No, we come up all right. We're going from Florida to Missouri. The next thing you know, we're going Virginia. to Virginia. Then we're going to Cherokee. It's just, I mean, it's gonna be. Yeah, we we have one in our backyard. That's a that's a topic for another time. That'll be a good one. Yeah, get to sleep in our own bed for that one. Eight uh, minute drive, so I don't be late to the boat ramp. Hardest hardest ones to win. Hardest ones to win, but the most fun to practice for. <laughs> yeah, so. But, I don't know. It's, it's just gonna be one of them years, man. You better tighten your bolts and, and grease your bearings because we're going, we're going places. We're going places. It's gonna be fun. Uh, <clears throat> everyone, uh, it'll be fun for everyone, not just us. It's gonna be, it's a pretty good trail, honestly. I don't mind it. I don't mind it, but like one of the things, like I don't know if there's just there comes a time that it just changed it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. It'll it'll be. Uh, be a shakedown for sure. We got the classic coming yeah, up. Yeah, I was about here to soon. say we got one more thing right here in Knoxville. To. That'll be fun. Drive some camera boats around and shake be, some hands. That'll be next week's topic. We talk about the classic oh. next month. Shout out to Lewis. Lewis, yeah. Lewis is gonna be on an old Rocky Top. Let's go, Lewis. We need to get Lewis down here. Oh, Lewis is coming. Lewis, we're gonna get Lewis on podcast one night. Talk to Lewis, see what he thinks, see how he's feeling, and just get a little background on what he did and how he got there i think that'd be awesome uh, we're, we're definitely need mr clean to come with us oh michael michael figaro that's i think that's all of our dreams that's all of our goals that's what that's ultimately what we're all trying to get to so i think that'd be a fun time that pretty much wraps up what we're trying to do tonight uh like i said welcome to southern outdoor media hopefully all our content upcoming and continuing <laughs> enlightens y'all gives y'all some ideas y'all enjoy it if y'all have anything you want to see let us know or any topics you want to hear us talk about let us know that's about all i got for y'all so y'all have a good night and thanks for watching tighten your bolts (laughs)